Well, hey there, welcome to day 909 of What's She Up To Now? Sharon Hornell, so I'm here documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. Lessons learned, mistakes I've made, things that have blown up in my face that I spent a lot of time and energy on and I encourage you to not do those things. Mistakes I've made that have cost me years of time and energy that really didn't pay off for the amount of effort that was put into it so that you don't have to make those mistakes. Today I'm thinking about simple and easy. I just shared on the Get Up and Go Challenge page, we're starting a new Get Up and Go Challenge on August 1st, a 30 day challenge. I prefer longer challenges because it really separates the serious people from the people that are just looking to get a quick fix from somebody's promotional material. Um, talk about that a little bit and I'm sure we'll talk about it more during the challenge as well. But I did commit that I want to do 10 minute segments or less every day and so I have to rethink how I'm doing it because I just talked for 20 minutes on a, the preliminary page about five steps to get what you want and I call them simple steps I was thinking easy steps to guarantee you to get what you want but that got me thinking about simple and easy sometimes we make well we can absolutely positively as human beings make our lives way more complicated than we have to uh, we as human beings make everything more complicated than it has to be and I with my nerdy engineering background and learning theories and science and math and advanced topics and detailed topics am a queen of that and I've learned that this, the more the simpler I make things the more basic the more foundational because there are threads of what works through everything so one of the examples of that is this, you know, five steps, and it can be four, four or five steps to getting what you want and guaranteeing that you get what you want. <coughs> it's simple <coughs> and it can be easy, but guess what? We always try to overcomplicate it and make it harder than it has to be. Instead of saying, hey, here's the four steps, just do them, and then going out and figuring out a way to make it happen, because how we actually implement anything is different for each and every one of us. And it's all based on our past experiences, what's worked, what hasn't, what are we willing to try. You know, a lot of people are willing to try one thing one time and if it doesn't work, they just quit and give up. Other people, we all have a tolerance for how many different things we'll try before we, we quit and give up. Some of us are really tenacious and we just keep going and going and going and going ad nauseum to other people because they to prefer to feel better and quit and say it's impossible. I love that that somebody came up with the impossible is I am possible. I love that because I've always felt that that nothing's impossible. And my dad taught me as a little girl, there's no and my whole life, there's no such thing as can't. And that means, you know, I might say I don't want to. I may say I'm not willing to put in the effort. I'm not, I, you know, it, there's very few things that are impossible for us to find a way to make happen in one way or another. And remember, it doesn't have to be us, you or me, personally doing the thing that we want to make happen. So one of the examples people always say whenever or I say there's no such thing as can't, well, I'm a man, I can't have a baby. I'm, you know, five foot one and a half, I can't be a basketball player. How do you know? If you want to be badly enough, no matter what your height, no matter what your weight, you could figure out what you needed to do to make that happen in your life. Now, are you gonna? Probably not, because if you're five foot one, you know that the competition and, and the physical relationship is something that you're probably not gonna choose to pursue that as your lifelong ambition or goal. But I guarantee if you made that your lifelong ambition or goal, you could find a way to succeed in that arena. And maybe it's you become a sports agent for all of the tall people. It, 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 and it's changing and defining the way we define success for each and every one of us. So talking about the five steps for the Get Up and Go Challenge and then how am I gonna, and how am I gonna break that down into to 10 minute or less segments and then an action item, which I, it's easy. I'm sure I can do it. I've done it hundreds of times before. So I just keep reminding myself, hey, not so many examples, don't talk so much. <laughs> That's the biggest one. And, and to keep it simple because simple and easy gets done complicated, you know, never gets done. I think of a couple of the resources and different things that I've learned in courses I've learned from experts and gurus, some of my favorite people of all time, and they'll come out, you know, Jack Canfield comes to mind. I love Jack Canfield, right? But he comes out with a book this thick on his success principles, and it took me, I probably had that book for five years, 
before I read it because I knew that the subject and the way he was breaking it down was way complicated, way more complicated than it had to be. And I think Jack knows that too. But he was trying to appeal to a, a broader audience with more. There was this whole belief that more is better, right? You know, you know, buy one, get one free. We've been convinced that more is better. Guess what? More is not always better. I gained more weight. That doesn't feel better to me. I got twice as much of something and it costs less, but it's more than I can ever use in a lifetime. It's the you know, the Sam's and the Costco model, you know, you have to buy everything in bulk. Well, I've learned over the years as it's gone from my family down to just me for the most part, I, it, it's a lifetime supply of something if I buy it at Sam's Club or Costco. So I do less and less and less of that. We need to do what's right for us in any situation. So uh, simple and easy are, is something I aspire to now. As, and as I get older, it's really interesting. The older I get, the more I want to simplify certain things and aspects of my life. I don't need all the stuff that I used to surround myself with. You know, when you go from raising your kids to being a grandparent, you need a lot less stuff than you used to have. Uh, and so I'm really enjoying that. And, and you know, the whole drive to just more, 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 more this, more that, hustle, grind, I don't believe it anymore. Did I believe it and did it almost kill me? Absolutely. But that's probably why I don't believe it anymore. I've learned what is right for me and I live in accordance with that instead of what everybody else thinks I should do or how the world works. Guess what? You decide how your world works and that's all that matters. Um, and of course, you're deciding in a way that doesn't negatively impact other people. Fun challenge today was about the greatest. What are you the absolute greatest at? What is your strength? And Super Size Your Business was about buying a pig and a poke. And I heard the expression, but I never knew what a poke was, and I never knew really, really what it meant, but it means to buy something sight unseen. Now with COVID-19, almost all of us have bought something, or are buying things almost every day or weekly or whatever, sight unseen. If you've ever been to a drive up window, they hand you a bag, which a poke is a bag. They hand you a bag with your products or services in it. Your, well, your products in it, your food. You drive away only to get five miles down the road. And as you're opening the bag, you realize that you have a fish sandwich instead of a Big Mac or whatever. It's just an example. And you're like, all right, I'm five miles away. Is it really worth the 10 miles plus frustration to wait in that line again to go back and get my Big Mac? Or am I just going to eat a fish sandwich today? I don't have a fish allergy, I'm gonna, which I don't, I'm going to eat the fish sandwich and I'm just going to keep moving on. And I'm probably just going to forget about it because I'm going to eat how many more hundreds of thousands of meals in my lifetime. And I, I forget to, to do that full circle and let the, let the business know, hey, you guys are totally screwed up. I ordered a Big Mac and I got a fish sandwich. This isn't okay. And you don't do it because you're expecting anything in return. You do it because you want to give people the feedback so they can make sure that their systems are in place and they don't make those mistakes for other people, right? Or, or in place. I expect that in my interactions with people too. I always expect if I do something wrong or if somebody isn't satisfied with the way I deliver something to them, that they're gonna tell me, tell me first. But most people, what they do is they tell 20 friends and they never call McDonald's and say, hey, you screwed up my drive through order. But they tell 20 friends and now you've got how many people can multiply over and over and over again that have the wrong story thousands of people um, that drive ups are always they always screw up your order it's always wrong because you're buying a pig in a poke something sight unseen I do love that idiom though especially now because so many of us are buying online and on the internet and, and sure the vast majority of businesses are awesome and good and delivering exactly what they say they're going to deliver to you and then there's others that just don't and are out there to scam and steal your money. And, and guess what? That's always been around. If it's been around since the 1500s that some unethical farmers were cheating people by putting cats or runt pigs in a bag and not showing it to the person before they bought it and figuring they had one up on them, um, you know, that's just ingrained in human behavior. And so we want to look out for it. We want to make sure that the people that interact with us are getting exactly what they expect. And that, number one, that we set their expectations right, but then that we're delivering what we say we're going to deliver. So I'm thinking about easy and simple today and, and how do I continually simplify things so that people will take action. Simplify things so that I'll take action. 
I think the reason I love challenges so much is because I break things down into a simple step, a simple thing that I can do easily every day. And if it's simple and easy and I can build it into my daily routine somehow, if I can build it into my morning routine or my meal routine or my exercise routine or my business, hey, I'm gonna do this every day now and test this out. If I can build it into something I'm already doing, I know that I'm gonna get the result I want and it's gonna be successful. I'm gonna get the result that I want faster than if I don't find a way to build it into either my routine or somebody I work with's routine to make sure that the job gets done, the task gets done. So that's what I'm thinking about today. I'm up at the cabin with my amazing youngest sister and we're hanging out, just the two of us, and it's pouring rain out, so I don't know what we'll do. We'll, we'll find something fun to do today. Uh, but that's what I'm working on. I'm working on the next Get Up and Go Challenge. And if I can help you in any way, ask in the comments below. If, uh, if you wanna know what the five steps are to guarantee to get whatever you want, I, I talked for 20 minutes on it, which is probably a lot, I mean, but I was trying to give stories and examples. So say there's something that you want and you're like, I just freaking don't know how I'm gonna get this. Just ask in the comments below and I'll we'll work it through an example so that you can know exactly what you can do and how you can do it to get exactly what you want. So um, that's it. Have an amazing day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. I'm letting you know how I'm going from the offline world to the online world. What's working, what's not, and how might you learn from the lessons I've learned so that you don't have to learn them all yourself. Whenever we can shortcut a process and model somebody else, that's an awesome way to learn. We don't want to copy anybody and do exactly what they're doing. But if we can learn in one area of our aspect of our life um, what works and what has worked for other people, then we know with 100% certainty that it can work for us. If I'm modeling someone, say I'm modeling Russell Brunson and something that he does online, well, I know that the guy's made billion dollars plus or billions of dollars online through his companies over the last decade. Why would I not want to model and learn what works for him with respect to business? Now, he's Mormon, so I'm never going to copy him or model him for his, his religious beliefs. But I am going to model him for anything, and not for anything, but for things that he says in the area of his expertise, marketing and communicating and uh, helping people get the word out about what it is that they do. Um, but we're not going to model somebody for everything. You know, it's like I followed Tony Robbins for, geez, probably 40 some years, 40 some years. Um, I've been a Tony Robbins, not a fan, but I followed him and learned from him and, and been mentored by him. And will I, will I follow him for everything that he does? No, absolutely not. But in the area of personal development and you know what's possible for, for me as a human being, I totally listen to Tony Robbins um, and, and several other people as well. But I don't copy everything that they do. I just pick and choose what's right for me. And those are the things I add and implement into my life. All right, have an amazing day. I will be with you tomorrow. Bye.